Feebly Open Sets in Ideal Topological Spaces, Part 1. This presentation is based mostly on the paper by Yezi Altalkani and Swadud Alismail from 2017. This work contains some interesting results on ideal topological spaces and feebly open sets in these spaces. Almost all definitions, examples and theorems in our video are taken directly from this article. However, um, in general, they can have earlier sources, yes, but basically all the credits go um, to our authors. A continuation of um, their paper, of the paper in question, has been published in 2018, and you can look into the bibliography. Um, this is our first video on this topic, and in this presentation we shall not introduce feebly open sets. As we said, this is chapter or part or volume one, and in this video we shall be concentrated on ideal topological spaces as such. In the next video we shall deal with feebly, semi, feebly i, and semi-i open sets. First of all, let us recall the very definition of ideal. Ideal is a non-empty collection i of subsets of x, where x is our initial universe, which satisfies the conditions listed below. The following conditions, yes, that if we know that certain set A is in our ideal and another set B is contained in A, then B is also in our ideal, so there is a kind of heredity. And if we have two sets which are in the ideal, um, then their union belongs to the ideal too. We know that uh, there is also a dual notion of filter. And in case of filters, subsets here are replaced by supersets, and here instead of union we have intersection. Well, finite unions and finite intersections, yes. Finite unions in case of ideals. Well, there are some examples from the paper in question, which we mentioned in our introduction. If we have this universe, which contains four elements, A, B, C, D, and this is our ideal, well, this is ideal, <laughs> but in case of this universe, for example, A, B, C, this set here, this collection here, empty set, singleton of A, singleton of C, and A, B, is not an ideal. Uh, well, for example, take this set and this one, singletons of um, respectively A and C, the union A, C, is not in this collection. So this condition is not satisfied. Now assume that we have a topological space and i is an ideal on x, on our universe. Then we may introduce this set. A star um, of i t. Well, so-called local function of A and I. Local function. The set of all those elements of universe, all those small x's, such that um, an intersection of any of their open neighborhoods with A, an intersection of such neighborhood with A, does not belong to the ideal. Now imagine that we replace this fragment does not belong to the ideal by is not empty. Then this would be the very definition of closure of A. So A star, local function of A, um, can be considered as a kind of generalization of the notion of closure. And here are some examples. We have this universe, A, B, C, very simple, just three elements, and this ideal, and this topology. And now we may consider these three sets, A, 
which is just AB, B, which is BC, and C, which is just a singlet of A. And here you can see and you can check this, you can compute that these are their local functions. A star is just like A, B star is empty, and C star is the whole universe, A, B, C. Well, one can prove some properties of A star. For example, well, that if A is contained in B, then their local functions are uh, the, the same inclusion holds between their local functions. That A star is closed in the sense of topology T. A star is just like closure of A star. A star star is contained in A star. Um, local function of the union of two sets is just like union of their local functions. A star plus B star. Um, in this case, if our ideal is um, singlet of empty set, if it contains only empty set, then A star with respect to this ideal is just closure of A. But this has been already said a few minutes ago, as you remember. And finally, if our ideal is uh, the whole power set of X, then um, A star is empty. Well, we may also define so-called I open sets, which depend on our ideal I. A is said to be I open, if A is contained in interior, in the interior of its local function, in the interior of A star. And the set of all I open sets is denoted by IO of XT. And of course, we may also consider I closed sets, which are just uh, uh, complements of I open sets. Well, the reader may check that if this is our universe. This is our topological space. Well, our well, our topology, and this is our ideal, which consists of empty set and singlet of A. Then the set of all I open sets on this space with respect to this ideal is just like this. Well, I think that this calculations, um, that checking of this fact would be simple, but rather boring, maybe even irritating. It can take some time. As we can see, I openness and openness are independent concepts. For example, in this case, universe, topology, and ideal, we have BCD, which is I open, but not open. Well, there are some notions which are analogous to the well-known notion of density. If A is contained in its local function, then A is called star dense in itself. If A star is contained in A, then A is called T star closed. If A is equal to, or equal with, if you prefer, A star, then A is called star perfect. If we have an ideal topological space, then, then one can prove that if A is T star closed and I open at the same time, then it is open. And the last thing in this video, another theorem says that every star dance open set is I open. And in the next video, we shall deal with feebly open and semi open sets, um, just as I have already. Um, said. Here's our bibliography and um, here is the paper on which our presentation uh, is based. Yes. Thank you very much for your attention.